Hi there, my name is Sheila Landry and I wanted to show a process of gluing the ornaments like I made for Lynn Andrews with Lynn Andrews um, 12 Days of Christmas pattern. Um, I'm mainly making this for the girls that are following along. I've had a couple of questions about how to glue the two-piece ornaments. I used my own ornaments that I cut. I do sell these. I've sold quite a few in the last month to you girls for making this. And what it is, it's, it's a flat ornament that I, I did a second cut on a bevel so the back can gently push back in to the surface and it's a self-framing. And it gives a really nice effect. The back, of course, sticks out a little bit, which I don't know if you can see in the pictures, but um, it's very easy to glue. I also make trays and things like that with the same process. Here's a scallop tray, and here's a snowflake that I'm going to be designing on later. And it's the same principle. They're cut on a, on a five degree bevel. So between the material that's removed from it and the angle, you're able to push it back and it gives a little bit of a depth to it. And a lot of people are scared of the glue-up process for it because when they're not glued, especially the bigger pieces, they feel quite floppy. Um, I do a clock that's quite big. It's 18 inches in diameter and it has three levels and it looks nice. It's only quarter inch thick like this, and it's kind of scary when you think of gluing it, but it really works out well. And when once I did it, I felt confident that you guys will be able to do it too. So I'm going to show you how on the ornaments. We'll start on the ornaments. And um, one other thing, this is my day two that I'm working on tonight. When I say in the instructions, you know, to leave the outside edge of the inner circle, Till the end that's this edge here because I bring the gold all the way on mine down into here because when the ornament sits back you have to line up the little dot I don't fill mine you could fill it with wood filler if you really want to but I mean I didn't do it on, even on this one and you can't tell but when it pushes back you do see the gold edge you don't see that outer edge except on the back here. So what I did with mine is right before I glued it is I, I used the float shade color, which here was Prussian blue. So it just continues that shadow around. So what I'll do when, right before I glue it is just put a light coat. You don't want to put thick paint because if you put a lot of paint on it, it's not going to fit properly. It's not going to go back at all. And you can see here from going in and out as I'm, as I'm designing or painting that um, the gold kind of gets scuffed up. So right before I glue, I touch up my gold a little bit. And then it, then it looks really nice because really I don't glue them until the very end. Here we go. And see when they're lined up, I, the the banner lines up and I'll be extending the banner here too okay so we want to be sure the front and the back are indicated that one last thing I just remembered I mentioned I mark the number four here this is number four because it's the last thing I paint and then after I paint the front I put a tiny number four here which you can hardly see in pencil and it erases right off. That way, if my ornaments get a little bit mixed up, you know, I put letters on you guys that had a lot of them. Most of them had letters, but um, I even put A1 and A4 for those who ordered like four sets. So you could always find the mate because I do cut them by hand. Like this is a reject that I'm showing for the, for the um, demo. And you could see I didn't get it quite round enough. There's a little bit of a flat edge here, which on mine you really don't see them i kind of use the rejects for myself because i don't mind and i know you don't notice it once it's painted but um they don't intermingle they have to stay with the one that that they were meant to stay with or else you're going to have problems they're not going to fit properly just because i hand cut them
Okay, we had some technical difficulties and my camera shut off. So I'm going to try again and um, I'm going to put these guys aside and I'm going to show you how to glue. Now you may want to mark your front. You don't have to. Um, I always put my reference or my drill hole at about the four or five o'clock mark on the frame and right same place. Of course, it's I, I drill a little bit to the inside of where I'm cutting so it, you could see it more on the inside because then when it's pushed back it's buried. You don't want a big hole on the edge. So there is a rhyme and reason. And I use Gorilla Wood Glue. The wood glue is the white glue that dries clear. You could use any clear drying glue. It's not going to take a lot of pressure or anything like that. It's not going to have a lot of wear on it, so most glues will work well. I use this little glue bottle. It's called a um, Baby Bot. It's a glue bottle. At, um, I think I got it at Lee Valley Tools, but they might have it at Home Depot. But I'll put the link for Lee Valley there. It was cheap. It was about five bucks. And now when we glue the frame, we're going to glue the lower part in here because the, the upper part is going to show, so we don't need any glue there. So we're going to go around the, low, the back edge, and I will show you. We don't need a lot of glue. I'm just going to run a little bit. And you can see where this bottle comes in very handy. It gives a nice little thin line. Start out with a good clean bottle. You know, make sure the tip is clean and there we go. And you don't have, you don't need a lot. I mean, that's, that's a lot. That'll hold it for sure. And I hold my frame and I hold the inside through the frame. And then I just drop it in and gently Push it into place evenly, because if you go crooked, it's going to pop through. And you can see on the back, there is glue. So I take a little water and a paper towel, or a Q-tip you could use, and wipe it off. That's it. Um, it may be a Good idea, I forget if I mentioned on the earlier part of the video before the camera shut off, to um, put a, a spray coat of clear varnish and let that dry before you glue them together. That way you'll have a barrier so when you wipe off, it'll wipe off nice, especially if you use the markers because you don't want to be using water on the areas where you had markers without sealing them in. So be sure to seal them before you glue them together. And I certainly glue them after they're painted. I mean, you could glue them before, but I wouldn't do it. It's going to be too hard to futz around the edges and stuff. So I'm going to show you the tray, and I'll glue that up a bigger piece. It's done in the same way, and this is for my woodworking people, too. I make a lot of candle trays. This was for I use this pattern for the pumpkin candle tray and things like that. There's going to be a couple more designs on that piece, too, and it's the same principle. You take the glue bottle and just run it a little bit along the bottom edge. You don't need a lot because it locks in place pretty much. The glue just helps it from, like, ever coming out. So there I ran it on the edge and now there's where my drill hole is so I know I'm that way. Same thing you, with the wood here you could line up the grain you can't do that on the MDF pieces but hold it into the center and seat it in try to be as even as you can and don't push really hard or you'll push it right through. The bigger you get the more um, the easier it is to push it through. I mean, if that happens, just wipe it down quick and do it again. But I mean, all you need is a slight pressure. And it'll lock it in place. And again, there's even less glue here. You can see it's not going to be a big mess. Same with the big pieces like the clocks. Wipe it down. 
and you're good to go. And it just gives a nice little, it's very subtle, it's not a big thing, but it does give a nice edge, and it gives a nice edge on the ornaments as well. So, I hope this helped you all. Um, I'm so glad you're all in the Lynn Andrews group with me, for those of you who are. For those of you who aren't, there's going to be a link for it. We're painting the 12 Days of Christmas this year, 2016. And we have a Facebook group, and we're all just doing our own pace, and we're going to just support each other and help each other with what we need help with. And it's been really fun so far. I really appreciate you girls who joined. We're having a good time, and I hope you are. So, until the next video, thanks.